now we are going to start our session okay so now we have our uh, speaker chanchur ghosh with us so i am going to give an introduction so chanchur is a seasoned professional in the telecom sector uh, with an illustrative track record in the area of marketing and business strategy and product development and product management and sales and a business unit head with pln responsibility now he comes with around 33 years of very rich work experience with organizations like uh, department of telecommunication and uh, like uh, bpl Mo mobile airtel reliance communication tata teleservices so so on so he has been in cxo level position since 2006 and cmo of tata, tata teleservices in 2006 and bu head with pln responsibility since 2009 and coo ceo since 2018 yeah now in flyxt mobile solution he has been the global head of business operations and consulting practice leading of uh, like around 100 plus telecom professionals and uh, across the all the like operators and the continents he has been an instrumental in the expanding the business multifold and the awards and recognition that the company has received globally now in reliance geo infocom uh, limited he has been the national head uh, customer life cycle value management he is currently the ceo of digispice technologies limited and chanchur basically has a illustrious we can say academic background also as well he is a pg dbm from iim calcutta and be from nit jaipur he is also an all india rank holder in ias examination that is upsc so he has uh, like we has a keen interest in sports and is a good chess player also please join me in welcoming chanchu to the session so now i am going to welcome mr chanchu ghosh to the session sir you can start now yeah uh, sir you are not audible uh, yeah thanks ma'am yeah and i think i am humbled by that introduction that you have given so uh, i would like to share my screen sure right ma'am you have to give me rights so while we do that uh so if you can uh, start up i think anushree would be able to uh, pass on the rights to you right so uh, i have been actually fortunate to be a part of this industry uh in india from its very inception you know i was with the first telecom operator uh in india modi telstra <clears throat> and i've seen it through its evolution in fact i, sh I should say that i'm fortunate to see through its evolution from the 2g days to 3g to 4g and right now we are talking of 5g so you can share your screen now yeah i have given the rights so is my screen now visible are we there yeah yeah it's visible okay okay fine okay. now let's get started so um, like what what i was telling that i have seen it through its uh, you know uh, journey from its 2g days to its 3g to to uh, 4g and now then the digital movement that happened uh, i mean in and around now first slide but before i come in there okay let, let me just tell you a background now when we talk of telecommunication or when we talk of telcos the first thing that would come to our mind sometime back that telecommunication was for communication was first to voice so uh, like you would have uh, i mean gone through the your different modules 
marketing that initially it was for the should i say acca segment uh price the price per minute was a prohibiting factor and to grow the market what the telecom operators did they uh, started lowering the price per minute they started lowering the prices and that expanded the market and while the market expanded uh there were other operators and since that there was revenue in the business there were other operators uh that jumped into the bandwagon you know bought into the fray and competition began to grow more intense so the prices began to fall even further i'm talking of voice right now and uh, but there was enough elasticity uh, so uh, voice revenues began to grow till a point till it hit the plateau and till it began to fall now the graph that you see out here in blue shows that the trend in the voice revenue figures are not important the trend in the voice revenue over the last 5 6 years and correspondingly there is an increase in the data revenue now had we had this conference maybe around 15 years back we perhaps would have been doing it on on audio because uh, certain applications were just not on if the if the data speeds were not not good so but when 3g came in there was a adoption of more and more data services i'll just tell you some figures like uh, in around 2006 or 7 in india the average data consumption per user was around 0.5 gb per month after 3g came in the consumption increased to around 3 to 4 gb per month on the outer side not more than 4 gb around 3 gb but when 4g came in in 2015 the average usage shot up to around 13 gb per month it was just an explosion it was just boom it happened you know so because many many of the many of the uh, you know applications which was still not quite supported by by 3g became possible when 4g came in now what had happened is the voice revenue began to fall and the data revenues the data consumption and the data revenues is still beginning to increase now there's a reason why i'm telling this i will come back to this okay after a while when i get more and more and more into data now before i get into the main topic i just wanted to show some stats with you uh all taken from you know public domain the trend has been more or less same in the developed countries like the european countries have taken germany even in the developing countries like kenya where i've actually done a lot of work at one point in time the voice revenues was increasing but now what we see is across the voice revenues are either decreasing or is flat though indonesia is not uh, i mean in terms of the 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 economic or the gdp parameters it does not fall perhaps in the developed category but it is a very evolved market in terms of its telecom service adoption in fact it is much more evolved than maybe india or any of the european markets they quite have worked very closely with them they have very very well evolved even there we see the same trend and evolve and also in the evolving markets as far as the telecom uh, services are concerned so through and through what we see is there has been a steady rise in the data revenue across markets and there is a steady decline or the revenues are flat and wherever it is flat it is going to go down primarily because of the falling rate per minute and after a point in time even if you drop the prices there is not much elasticity in terms of usage which is caused now actually what is actually driving this digital revolution to the factors one by one one is convergence of technologies a customer can access any service any time through any device small screen big screen anywhere so he is location agnostic device agnostic and any of the services today are you know it's universal 
another major reason for the explosion of these digital services are the penetration of smartphones. Now, certain things are just not possible on feature phones, the phones that used to use maybe 15, 20 years back, maybe 20 years back. Okay, some of the, some of the, uh, like a application like hailing a cab through uh, uh, Uber. Okay, you, I mean, you couldn't have done it through a, a 2G phone. So the penetration of, of smartphones has made the user interface, what, what, you know, a lot more easy. What you see in, in bold, or what it means to the what it means to the customer. One is the services are are now available across all devices seamlessly, be it your banking applications or through any of the services, e-commerce applications, anything. The user interface is a lot more easier. What is also caused is cause the explosion is the rollout of the 4G services. You know, now, even maybe 10 years back when 4G was not rolled out in India and in many parts of the world, okay, 3G would have delivered a quality of experience, a quality of service till a point. Certain things were still not possible. So people spoke a lot about so speeds and all that. The, the experience was not quite there. And what has actually happened, now we have a should I say a plethora of apps and services? You, I mean, you ask for anything, you know, like from hailing a cab to banking services to e commerce to ordering food, you know, every aspect of our life, okay, it is just at the, at, at the touch of a button, it is on the phone. One major factor that has actually driven this growth is the political will. The government pushed towards digitization. That also has got a major factor. Why? Why the digital revolution has happened, and one and one thing that uh, does deserve a mention is the pandemic. It has done a lot of harm to economies. It has done a lot of harm to people across, but it has its plus points as well. What we have seen is, like, if I go back one step back, okay, after the pan pandemic, you could see the jump of the data services that done the jump of, uh, you know, there's a steep increase of data consumption. You know, when the uh, previously we 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 had to carry a mobile and a purse. Now, even if you don't carry a purse, it is it's just it's okay. It has come to that stage. Every point you can make payment digitally. Okay, everything is there. You know whether you're buying food, okay, whether you're uh, going from one point to another, or whether you're, uh, you know, booking a hotel, be it anything. You know, digitization has actually touched the grassroots. After, after I mean, after the inflection, uh, uh, after the pandemic. So what we in the telcos, what we have done is now seeing the seeing this increase in this data, what we have on the way we have actually evolved, we have categorized all these apps into different categories, and we have seen which are the apps which consume a lot of data, which are data hungry. Like for example, if a person streams video versus a person who goes to Amazon, okay, and buys a buys uh, an, an article, you know, or buy something or avails a service. Video streaming, music streaming, games, they are very, very data hungry. And that, what we have also done, that we have mapped it against the customer engagement. And I'll tell you why we have done it. Okay, because it is impact, it is important. Okay, if you see that this is the way that the uh, customer preferred preferences are evolving, it is important also to understand how the data is being consumed by the customer. And which are the apps or which are the services which are data hungry, based on which our strategies will evolve. Because end of the day, as a, as a telecom operator or as a revenue manager in the telco, okay, my selfish uh, objective 
is to see ways and means how to increase the data consumption, how to increase the voice consumption of the purposely I mentioned voice also because of engagement, how to increase the consumption of the customer and how to get a bigger share of his wallet. That is from the business point of view. So it is important for us to understand how the customer, A, which are, which are, which are the apps which pull a lot of data or which are the data hungry apps versus what is the customer engagement? How clued are customers engaged with those apps? And that brings us to the, the next slide. The pie graph on the right typically, typically shows how a consumer uses his data. For example, if he uses 10 GB of data, around 4 GB of data would be consumed in video streaming. Music, you would be consuming around 1.15. Uh, around one to two GB. Okay, social media, etc. So there goes the pie. Also, what we have seen is that what percentage of the subscribers actually use the services? Like web applications, practically all of them. WhatsApp on WhatsApp, practically all of them have used WhatsApp or some social media, be it Twitter or be it uh, Signal or be it WhatsApp or something or other. Practically. Everybody uses it. So while this gives, should I say, an empirical, should I say, view of how data is being consumed by the customer, but in today's context, this is not enough. And I come back to the uh, a comment made by a gentleman that he's eager to know how data is being used. Now, why we have actually evolved is that we are gradually moving to segmentation at the level of one, and I'll explain what it actually means. A couple of years back, okay, when we did, okay, when we had the entire, uh, should I say, uh, customer base, we had broader segments, okay, based on usage patterns, based on behavioral patterns. And that was good maybe 20 years back. But then as things began to evolve, okay, customer engagement had to be more, less generic and more customer centric based on the individual customer's preferences and usage behavior. Okay, therefore, it is important to understand how the customer uses data. I will give you one example, which will be easy to understand. Uh, maybe 20 years back when voice was predominant, we dissected voice like uh, customers weekend calling. Okay, so if there were more weekend calls, we had a weekend pack. If a customer did a lot of roaming between countries, we had an international roaming pack. If he did a lot of calling between a few sets of individuals, we had something called friends and family pack. So voice was dissected at one point in time, maybe 15 or 20 years back, and we had different packs to get more out of the customer's wallet. Now, all that is actually irrelevant now. Okay. And what we did maybe two decades back, we are actually doing it in terms of the data KPIs or the digital KPIs, okay, that the customer leaves behind, that the customer leaves behind. So progressively, we are moving towards segmentation at the level of one. And in my sub subsequent slides, I will explain how it is actually done. And if it is done that way, then how can it be monetized? Now, this is an important slide, okay. Like one of the objectives that I have, uh, I was sharing with ma'am, that it is not, you know, it would be too myopic if he's, if he just, I mean, as a takeaway, if we just uh, discuss some use case and uh, the participants in this conference, 
uh, understand the use cases and you know but if we are able to think how companies have re-strategized their strategies and in the segments that they are working in with the changes in technology how strategies needs to be re-strategized then i think it would be a 60 minutes well spent right now let's come back to the use case of how the telcos have transitioned in the midst of the digital revolution now what was happening that customers were using our customers are using or transitioning from a voice centric to a data centric to a data centric to the different apps and services digit or digital services that we just spoke of now telcos at one point in time they were just a conduit they're just a pipe of voice and data they had, they were just the enablers to provide voice services and they were just the enablers of providing data now what does that mean enablers of providing data at one point in time we were happy selling a if a person is consuming say uh, 1 gb of data a month we were happy selling him or trying to up upgrade him to a 2 gb and progressively to a 3 gb or sell him packs of higher bundled value now in that case the telco is just acting as a data pipe nothing more than that then instead now telcos wanted to be the digital lifestyle partners of the end consumer now what does that mean and why do they want to do it like the reason why i showed the first slide is that the rate per minute of voice began to fall now that had its elasticity in usage but after a point in time it saturated and then the voice revenues began to fall the same thing that happened to voice will happen with data at one point in time telcos know that now data is more and more affordable okay so that has expanded the should i say the data usage but after a point in time the data revenue will fall then what will the telcos do then so there is a effort or there is a should i say a conscious effort by telecom operators to have their own apps okay i will give you some examples like safaricom i'll give a example in my subsequent slides safaricom is having their own video app they are having the own music app okay it is not that spotify's uh, don't exist is not that hotstar's or netflix don't exist okay but in spite in, in spite the maybe the indosats or the vodafones of the kind the airtels of the kind the reliance geos of the kind they are having their own app but why are they doing that now let's take the a uh, uh, a small example say i am a subscriber i have data services i subscribe for should i say uh, netflix i give a subscription netflix has its own should i say after the, the partner payouts okay they have their own share what the telco gets is only the users data of the subscriber for using the data services so, say for example if the subscription of uh, of a netflix so let's let's give our pretty number say 500 rupees per month netflix gets that 500 rupees the operator only gets revenue out of the data usage nothing more now what the operators want is they want a cut in that 500 rupees because that is going to be a additional revenue stream for the operators as the data revenues also fall along with the voice likewise if it is a music app for example spotify the same thing holds for spotify a person subscribes to spotify spotify gets the 300 rupees monthly subscription what the telco operators get out of the 300 rupees if they don't have their own app the answer is nil so what the telcos also therefore they want to do is they want to cut off that 300 rupees which a spotify is taking singularly right so therefore there is a conscious effort by telcos across 
to have their own apps, either white label or as partner services. And I'll give you some examples as well. Now, while that is happening, is say, supposing you have a music app, you have a so that let's take the example of Geo. You have Geo TV, you have Geo Cinema, you have Geo Music, which is called Geo Savan, all separate apps. Okay, we also have a customer care app where the customer goes and does his, does his recharges. Now, what the telcos are also progressively doing is they're consolidating all those apps into one single app, into one super app. Not only the big operators, even the smaller ones, like Encel in Nepal, we, we are doing a project with them, where in one super app, they're consolidating their customer care recharges, the entertainment services, the horoscope is very, very, uh, uh, I mean, popular. Okay, so the horoscope services, airline booking, taxi booking, all in one. And the reason being is that when a person is booking his airline ticket through the Telco Super app, the Telco is taking a cut out of out of that uh, that air ticket price that the customer has booked through the app which is an incremental source of revenue. Now, if you go to Geo, for example, uh, Geo is the market leader in India. If you go to the Geo app, you can, I mean, do your recharges. You can book a ticket. You can also buy tomatoes. You know, such is the level of consolidation. And with every such, consolidation, the telco is having incremental revenue out of it. Right? Now, what it also means, I am, I'm coming to the right-hand side now. What it also means is just having this, these services are not enough. You need analytics and a deeper understanding of the customer's lifestyle and how the data is being used, which is spoke of in the previous slides, I will come, come to it again and engage with the customer. I'm going slow here with relevant contextual offers and in real time. Some people also do it in near real time. Okay. The difference between real time and near real, near real time, I will explain in a bit. Okay. But Let's hold on to this for a moment. If you are to give relevant contextual offers, you need to build a customer database. You need to build a customer profile, which captures the customer's interests, which should I say profiles the customer and you need to engage with the customer as and when he is using it. I will give an example. There's a, a app in uh, a service in India call Make My Trip, where you can book airline tickets. You will notice that the moment you finish booking your airline ticket, you get a pop-up that, would you like to book a cab? It doesn't tell before, it doesn't tell after. It is relevant because if a person is going from, say, Bombay to Delhi, after he lands in Delhi, from the airport, he will have to go somewhere. So at in real time, at that point, I get a message, if you want to book a cab, then I get a, some offer from there, which is which gives me convenience, if not the price. Okay, so this is again a different topic altogether. We can have another session on this, how, how telcos are doing that, but we will skip that for the moment. Now, all that is being done to drive the data usage and therefore the ARPU and also to have supplementary sources of revenue streams as the voice and the data revenue begins to fall. And in the process, have an engaged customer and that helps in customer retention. I will give you some examples like the Turks, for example, they have understood it long time back. Okay, so this is the way it, uh, you know, uh, customer preferences are evolving. So these are some verticals that, uh, or the digital services that 
axis. The vector cell is uh, is uh, actively engaged in. Another example is Intersat. Now, Intersat. Now, I want you to spend some time in here going through the verticals. They have identified around thirteen verticals where they will engage in. Now, after we go through some of them, my question would be: Intersat is supposed to be a telco. Okay, Intersat self care. Okay, for recharges, I understand it is something to do with telco. They are also getting into fintech. They are a marketplace to provide fintech services. Now, what has a telco to do with fintech? Okay, one would be uh, one would ask a logical question or a too simplistic question. Okay, the reasons are what I have just mentioned some time back. It is not only Indosite. If you go to Africa, like Momo. Momo is the short form of mobile money. It is so prevalent there; people don't carry cash. All transactions happen on Momo. Now let's see some other verticals. What Indosat is is interested in? They are interested in gaming. Okay, it drives data services. Uh, data we have we have uh, seen a couple of slides back. TV and video. They are data hungry. Now e-learning. So what will a, a telco to do with e-learning or e-health? It is to drive customer engagement, and I'll come back to the slide that this will be that will be my last slide. Okay. Now these are the different verticals where the telco has got some expertise in the first first part of the pie. Self care they know, e-commerce they have tied up with a a, a few. Uh, uh, should I say service partners? We in DigiSpice we have partnered with them in some of the verticals, not all. Okay, so be it the telco, telco, or communication related services, or the entertainment related services, or something as diverse as e-learning, e-health. Okay, IoT or services is of course something to do with. Now, having said that, okay, how do you do it? Okay. Now we have seen some slides back that there are some apps which have got a very high data through. They are data hungry by nature. There are some apps which say a news or a e-commerce transaction. Okay. Inherently, the data consumption is going to be low. It cannot be as as high as a video uh, streaming application. Further, what we have actually helped help Indosat. This is actually for Indosat and some of the other operators whom we have actually partnered with. It is further categorized into where a telco has a corresponding app. They don't have a corresponding app. For example, going back in here, the telco doesn't has a corresponding app in music and they have in gaming. You know, in TV, they do not have a app in e-learning or in e-health. Okay, it is not possible for telcos to ha have, say, one uh, thirty verticals. They have only thirteen verticals. Okay, so the the entire should I say categorization of these apps have been put into a two by two matrix. A where the telco has a corresponding app and the data throughput is high. For example. Video streaming, games, music, and some other apps, where telco has a corresponding app, but the data throughput is not high. For example, ordering of uh, for a cab or ordering for food, and where the telco does not have a corresponding app, okay, they're happy just acting as a conduit of data transfer, but also at the same time. Identify potential areas where they should be developing an app. If in those applications the data consumption is high, customer engagement is high, it makes sense for or the customer engagement to is high. It makes sense the for the telco to include these apps into their own apps, either the white label or through the partner services.
allow me to come to the next process thing so how do you do this now this is a very important uh, thing now while i again i go back to where i started the purpose of this session is to make people think right when we are are discussing a use case of telcos now these things have not been taught to us anywhere you know in in any institute okay or in or these things were not prevalent maybe 20 years back but when we saw when we saw that this is there's a need to understand the data usage okay i'll tell you this is what we did now whenever you use, you use your phone okay i will explain this very very simplistically i'm in the first circle that is category a whenever you use your phone okay with your knowing or without your knowing you actually leave behind digital signatures like when you are listening to your music going to spotify okay you are leaving back a digital signature when you are ordering food you are leaving back a digital signature that you have ordered for food if you have gone to youtube you have left behind a digital signature okay so what we have what we have done is we had first identified the most most commonly used say 2000 such urls and categorized them into 20 categories say one category would be music say example a person has gone to spotify he has gone to youtube music he has gone to uh, should i say geo7 okay so all of them come into the music category they go to okay now they have gone to amazon they have gone to flipkart okay they have gone to some other e-commerce sites so all that has been clubbed in under category as e-commerce likewise what we have done is we have classified this around 18 1800 to 2000 such should i say dpi signatures into these 20 categories and what could not be categorized we are happy to keep them as others now against these categories we have mapped i go back to one slide in here now have i have the categories in which the customer uses uses data and in the categories then i have mapped where i have a app i do not have a app. map these categories into the corresponding telco app and then further categorize them into which are the apps which are data hungry and which are the apps which are light on data now coming back to what i had mentioned segmentation at the level of one against each of the categories and against each of the customer we have mapped how much does every individual customer <coughs> use data under this category for example if you visualize a table where the rows are customer 1 customer 2 customer 3 to customer n okay maybe 100 million such rows okay and each of the columns are the customer's data which profiles the customer and that answers to a gentleman's uh, uh, question that how do you use the data okay i'm telling you the methodology every column okay is a uh, attribute to the customer's profile now when we are some would be his demographic data some would be his recharge data some would be his usage data in terms of voice some would be in usage data in terms of his data and say there would be 20 more columns which are dissecting the customers should i say digital signatures into how much data that he is using under each of the categories so therefore at a customer level i know if i have used 10 gb of data per you know normally i use that 4 gb is in video streaming 1.5 or 2 gb is music and etc etc i have i have custom i have information at the customer level 
okay segmentation at the level of one what we say it and to that you add more columns like his propensity so is he a music lover okay at what times of the day does he uh, visit uh, 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 these music sites okay you also map the other kpis all in different columns like his days of usage his frequency of visit and the more columns you add the more complete is the customer profile and like what i said at the beginning of this all the data is there only thing you need to know how to process the data the way you want to use it and i my very uh, i mean common example that i give is that data is like crude oil okay just that data lake by itself you can't do anything it is like crude oil but if you want to put that crude oil into a petrol car you will have to process the crude oil to get petrol out if you want to use the crude oil to run to fly planes you from the same crude oil you will have to process the the crude oil for jet fuel and likewise for diesel and likewise for other things so depending on the customer i'm making a very important point depending on the type of engagement that you would want to do with the customer you build these kpis i'm repeating depending on the type of engagement that you want to do with the customer you therefore know that what are the customer kpis that is required to run these programs and therefore how do you need to pull the data out to give an analogy you have a petrol car a car that is run on petrol so you know that you have that and you know to to run this car what you need is petrol you don't need diesel so you process the crude oil to get petrol out of the crude oil and that's what you store out here and here in 3 and 4 okay now for each of the you know categories then you list the the customers usage against each of the categories okay and now to i'll just give you a a uh, 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 example now to drive a particular use is same music okay as a use case what we have done then then done is that we have categorized the total data usage into the different buckets and from there we have done how many uh, customers are there how many uh, total users are there these are just general data at the macro level and then for that same music streaming category we have identified which app has is the most popular app and for base which is the safaricom out of that the figures here here are not important what we have done is if in the music category okay there are so many users okay out of that the top app users which is spotify in this case you have so many users but in base you have only in base music for safaricom we have only this many users that means if there are so many users okay out of that the base penetration is so small so the next question is this is a use case what we have done for safaricom first we have then identified all the all the users who listen to music now i'm coming to having had all this data having done all this okay my objective here is to increase the usage of base music which is the music of of, of safari com the first thing is to is to identify who are the people okay who listen to music but have not downloaded okay that i have tried to explain through this pro diagram identify all users across all otts whether he uses youtube music or spotify or any other Uh, some of the local apps they they have okay including base out of that how many have downloaded base music unless you download base music you can't use it how many have downloaded yes how many have downloaded no if a person has not downloaded base music the first the first objective is to get him to download and if he has already downloaded base music the objective is okay to drive traffic from spotify to base music 
okay this is a sort of a segmentation that we have done that for the people who have not for the people who have not downloaded base music we have then categorized them in the music category in terms of the how much uh, data in the music category the customer uses versus the days of usage which we call the drip daily regular intermittent and poor daily means a person who listens to music more than 25 days we classify that he is more or less he is a daily user and 15 15 to 24 days okay these are not hard boundaries okay just a matter of convenience they are regular okay so this becomes the priority uh, i mean if i've got to should i say migrate customers who are the customers whom i should first prioritize obviously the person who has got a very high usage on on music and who uses listens to music regularly which should be my priority one priority two and that's how you identify the customers okay and for each of these segments then the operator decides what is the relevant local content okay which is going to attract what is the content that spotify has and what is the content that i need to promote and likewise okay you improve your penetration okay now for those who have already downloaded okay i will give a small example say the total usage in the music category for me is 3 gb okay now out of that my usage in spotify is only 0.4 gb that means i listen to music but i don't go to base music okay so to that subscriber i will want to shift his usage from other ott apps to base music and for the people who say out of that uh, 3 gb that i use 2 gb is already on base music i don't do anything at all i don't need to okay and the reason why i want to do it is i want to migrate the usage from the competing apps to my own app because the more he uses the share that i get out of the content usage will be i will get a share of the content usage that from the subscriber over and above his data usage going back if he just uses spotify okay i get only data usage and the and spotify makes the whole of the monthly subscription fee but if i can get him to use my content then i get a share of the content as well or an above the data usage okay so let me go to the next okay now there will be there will be other op- this this is an interesting slide there will be other uh, uh, apps also where the data throughput would be low so what can i do there you know i may have i may or may not have partner services i can do cross promotions there okay now let's take an another example say what we have done for ensel in nepal nepal has got a tie up with a food delivery should i say app called food mandu now typically like what i said is that the engagement might be high a person might be ordering for food maybe uh, i mean three times a week but the data consumption is going to be typically going to be low so the approach that has been taken is that me as a telcos okay my partner is food man so i tell food man to the listen i am going to identify users okay or i going to identify subscribers who use other apps like zomato the local zomato or the local swiggy or go to some of the restaurants okay and buy food okay so i am going to give you a captive base of customers 
who order food online. Okay, and I can also tell you that whether he is a casual user or he is a regular user, so I can do it by his frequency of visits. I can tell you which day of the week he actually does that. So, food mandu, what I will do is I will not share the data with you, but I will tell you the count of data. I'll anonymize the data, okay, and I will give you the count of subscribers, okay. So, for these many million subscribers. I will run a campaign for you on a Saturday for these set of customers who order food over the weekends and whose frequency of ordering food is pretty high. So, how does the partner benefit? The partner benefits that he gets a captive, relevant target segment. The campaign is not being run to any random subscriber. It is being run to subscribers who actually order food. What do the customer get? We will tell the partner. Therefore, if I'm giving you a captive base, the customer will take you over a swiggy only if you give, say, free delivery or something like that, or delivery at fifty percent. There has to be something from the from the customer also, or for the customer also. And what does the tele, uh, telecom uh, telco get in return? Okay, there are different revenue models. Either you get a lump sum from the partner, or you get a cut from each of the transactions that he does. Also, another thing that you can do is you can do targeted ad advertising to this captive base. For example, there is a very popular, should I say, a food delivery, uh, should I say, app, Swiggy. 40%, 35 to 40% of the total revenues is from advertising. And that comes in a very, very targeted manner. Telcos also have the capability of, should I say, geofencing. If I want to run a, a targeted campaign for using this data, and I want it will be in locality A and B, I will only run it only in those BTSs where I can geofence, where this offer will not go to the other end of the town or it will not go to some other city also. It will only go to this locality. This is a localized, therefore, targeting that I can do. So now let's do a quick re recap. At one point in time, telcos were the conduits of voice. Then they became the conduits of data just a data pipe, then they started understanding, okay, how the customers use the data. Then what they did is they dissected the data, built customer profiles. In sum, you get an incremental revenue through your own apps. And where you don't have an app, or where you know that you will not get data usage from there, you can run campaigns, very, very targeted campaigns for your partners or for those who are also not your partners, okay, to help to monetize the data. Now I come back. Now what I've just said, say for example, a food delivery, food manu. And actually, this approach is universal. It can be applied to any vertical, okay, or even outside this vertical. I can run a similar campaign, be it e-learning. If I have, if I know customers, okay, are visiting a, a app called Study IQ, okay, which trains people for, okay, and there is a competing which is Pace, okay, is an institute called Pace. Okay, which trains pe people for engineering admission. I can run a program for these partners in a very, very targeted manner because you like it or not, Telco has got all the data that the customer uses. The moment he uses his phone, the Telco knows what he's doing. What, what the, therefore, what you need, therefore, to understand if the data is there, all the data is there in the network. 
you know, I had been to Indosat sometime in November, okay, and then to Ghana and in, in Kenya, okay, and where we have said that we will be able to provide analytics as a service, okay, we may be in one or two of these verticals, but across any verticals, I'll be able to help you to engage with the customer or be a part of his digital lifestyle, even though if you're a telco, and therefore get a share of their digital usage. Okay, and that's how, you know, that's, that's a forward path that the telcos around, I mean, across the globe, okay, are gradually evolving to. And that brings me to the last slide.